Cyclone chances increasing across the Indian Ocean with Australia implicated on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for March 8th. So we're still code blue and we're still in a similar situation than we found ourselves in yesterday with four areas of interest, all at varying chances of development. But the Indian Ocean has the highest chances right now, in particular a system near 90 degrees east that could be tracking towards Australia over the weekend. In the Atlantic, it's 84 days until hurricane season begins and we've got few pieces of cloud there but also particularly a slight risk that's in effect across the southern United States today uh, with uh, hail, strong winds and a tornado threat uh, possible. In the eastern Pacific 67 days to go until hurricane season and it's still looking fairly quiet with some light to moderate cloud cover over the ocean and one or two little bits and bobs for Hawaii today but in general it's pretty peaceful. In the Western Pacific, definitely so, there's very little going on here, just some low cloud by the looks of things towards the northern reaches towards Japan. In the North Indian Ocean, fairly quiet there as well, just the tail end of the monsoonal system, a very large gyre that's occurring over the Eastern Indian Ocean, there you can see the rest of it, and an 80% chance of development on the southern end of it, and towards the right hand side a 30% chance still for a potential second system that could form off the coast of Western Australia. We've also got another 30% chance that we've now marked in the southern Pacific that could develop near Vanuatu in the coming days. And then of course we've got our 60% system still near Madagascar, still a big question mark over whether that actually develops or not, but it is going to start to move towards Mozambique shortly away from the coast of Madagascar. There's the rest of the South Pacific looking further east, east of the international date line and there is uh, increasing cloud cover actually, uh, but we don't expect any of this to become a tropical cyclone in the next five days. Well here's the area of interest that we've been watching for many days now, it is still refusing to form, 155 kilometers from Europa Island, 264 from Manombo, 277 from Toliara, 569 from Inhambane in Mozambique and 760 from Beira. It will be end ending up going in that sort of direction northwesterly uh, fairly soon and right now it's just stalling out maybe a little bit further west than we initially expected in this stalling motion and that will probably be good news for Madagascar if anything. Let's take a look at it on satellite imagery and it is fair to say that it is not looking very healthy. I would say that the circulation which is exposed has gotten worse in the last 24 hours rather than better and the convective tops are much more minimized as well. Just a small area there on the northern side uh, but a lot more lower cloud further towards the north away from the system. So it's not looking very good right now but there is still the potential as it draws back up towards the northwest in the next few days and probably attracts some more energy from warmer sea surface temperatures. Looking at the water vapor imagery particularly you can see how that has evolved in the last uh, 24 hours or so. Uh, it's gotten not so good on that latest imagery. So the circulation is still trickling towards the south by the looks of things and maybe a slight southeasterly component right now actually uh, but we expect that fairly soon in the next 24 to 48 hours it will start to move uh, definitely towards the northwest and pick up some pace. Well here's the eastern Indian Ocean you can see all of this cloud cover huge amounts over Indonesia and off the coast and towards the southern side of that you can see somewhat becoming a little bit more detached this potential system that 80% chance that we've given. Now that 30% chance further east, which Australians might be interested more about, 
Uh, that hasn't actually developed yet. It's still a future system that we're looking at. Now here's the 80% chance right now. And we're still not saying that it's going to form immediately, uh, just that we've got a high chance for the next five to seven days. And there it is on the water vapor imagery, blowing up a little bit of convection near the center where we perceive the center might be. Uh, it doesn't have a center yet, definitely we can tell you that uh, because it's looking fairly linear still at this point, but maybe just a slight bit more rotation than we saw yesterday but it's still got some way to go before we can call it a tropical cyclone. Here's a wide shot of the whole Australian region. The Southern Hemisphere as a whole is pretty uh, ramping up by the looks of things, certainly in the amount of energy. How many tropical cyclones will that produce? That's going to be the question for the next week. And this is the South Pacific, this other system now that is on the radar near Vanuatu. Not looking too bad actually, uh, but it needs to develop a bit more convection and get uh, shore up that uh, circulation there. Well, the Eastern Pacific has thrown some cooler water down the equatorial region in the last uh, couple of days, which is getting a lot of people talking about this potential La Nina. In the Atlantic, temperatures continue to hold on in the Caribbean Sea, 27 degrees. And that's pretty good. In the Western Pacific, uh, still fairly warm waters there as well, and they'll be starting to increase again, 28 plus in some parts of the Philippine Sea, uh, especially from Guam. <coughs> right the way through the Philippines into the southern part of the South China Sea. Bay of Bengal, 26 degrees Celsius waters starting to lick the coast of Bangladesh and those warm waters are extending up the west coast of India as well. The southwest Indian Ocean, very warm waters for all of the Mozambique Channel, uh, but where this system is heading, it's quite far south. It's about 28 to 29 degrees Celsius, but once it pulls northwestwards, it'll be back into the 30 degrees Celsius waters. Now, in the Australian region off the coast of Western Australia, very warm waters at those lower latitudes. It's still a little bit cool off the coast of Western Australia further south, but well above 30 degrees further north. Southern, Hemis Southern Pacific as well, near Vanuatu, around 30 degrees Celsius there towards Fiji as well for that potential system. Very warm SSTs ahead of it and it will enjoy that for at least a few days. Compared to average, most of the areas that matter are above average, as you can see here, the Southwest Indian Ocean around two to three degrees above, the Australian region, are particularly the hot pile south of uh, Java, Indonesia, and in the Coal Sea as well, very much above average, maybe up to three degrees. That slight cool area in the Eastern Pacific, certainly growing, and in the Atlantic, it's above average in the tropical zones. Oceanic heat content is still very high in parts of the South Pacific and extending through significant amounts in the Coral Sea, uh, Vanuatu and Fiji. In the Northern Pacific, it's still looking decent from Guam to the Philippines as well. Anything from green onwards is certainly showing a decent amount of energy and even in the Eastern Pacific, one or two spots there already this early on in the year. So let's take a look at the GFS computer model then and you can see the progress of this system in the southwest Indian Ocean, the Mozambique Channel. You can just about make out its centre moving towards the northwest, uh, north of Beira land, for probably between Beira and Kelimane, and then moving inland slightly and then possibly moving back out. If you're struggling to see it, we'll draw the track of the system as it moves along. I keep wanting to call it Storm, but it actually doesn't manage to do that, except maybe just a brief period right at the end there as it hugs the coast. And then it swivels southeastwards and moves towards Beira there. Well, this is the Southeast Indian Ocean, and you can see this storm eventually develops, but it really struggles still to get the circulation going until maybe the 10th or the 11th. And then that second system forming out of nothing there further east, uh, from strong winds moving along there, the southern coast of Java, and eventually uh, giving host to this potential system, that 30% chance further east. Other models aren't as supportive and uh, forecast and figure that you know, we'll only get one system instead of the two. Now here's the South Pacific and briefly you can see that storm forming there. Um, it becomes a tropical storm only for a short period by the looks of things before it loses track of its circulation. It gets elongated and moves off towards uh, Tonga actually, south of Fiji. Uh, and briefly there at the beginning though, it looks like it does become a tropical storm. That's on the GFS model, but we're only giving 30% because not really other, other, are any other models supporting it. 
We've marked out the Coco Skeeling Islands on the left and the Christmas Island on the right there because we can't really see it. And looking at the rainfall chart here over the next seven days, you can see how those islands and the western coast of Australia get in on lots of rainfall there. And further north as well, quite a bit of rain too. So rainfall, actually the forecast has gone down for the islands, getting up towards 6 inches maximum, 150 millimetres, and it's been transposed further eastwards towards Australia, and we're getting maximums now close to 16 inches, that's 400 millimetres for the next 7 days in parts of the Western Australia, Northern Territory border region, and towards Darwin even, 14 inches uh, in that area, that's 350 millimetres. Parts of Indonesia could get up to 23 inches, which could cause serious problems on the eastern tip of Java. Well, in the longer range, day 5 to 10, what happens to these two systems then? They both become hurricane strength. The first one hits the coast, the second one gets absorbed into it, and I'm not sure about that happening, uh, but it's actually the second system, the 30% 30, 30 chance that wins out in the end, if you watch closely. The 80% chance is the one that gets absorbed into its uh, orbit and gets sucked up, and then that system moves inland as a Category 1 and then starts to weaken eventually. That might be a wild forecast, though. We're not sure on that just yet. South Pacific, maybe another system there off New Caledonia, doesn't last very long, and then another system off the coast of Queensland there later on, around the 16th or 17th. Can't tell if it's a feedback problem on the GFS or not, sometimes that happens in this area, but maybe that could be a scenario, and further east of that, maybe even another system there as well trying to develop, a very small one, so quite congested there in the coral sea in the 5 to 10 day range. Scan the barcode and that will take you to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our products as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. We also have our Still Waiting for Hone t-shirts. I'm going to get old before I finish uh, reading that out because we've been waiting five years for it already. In the Western Pacific then, in the Silly Range, there is a signal from the GFS, there it is, developing tropical storm, moving quite close to Palau and then eventually west-northwestwards into the Philippines, um, a tropical storm landfall there it looks like for Samar. Uh, towards the very end of that silly range. I wouldn't take much on this one just yet. Um, I would say very low confidence and that is day 16 that it would make landfall in the Visayas region. Australian region for the same period looking at one or two more potential storms one particularly in the Gulf of Carpentaria that ends up developing and fills up the whole Gulf there and then moves off towards the east by the looks of things and another system tries to develop there near New Caledonia as well so a very busy and disorganized period in the Coral Sea is what's being envisioned by the GFS longer range whether that happens or not, we've seen one or two fails so far this season, haven't we? Uh, so, big question marks on that. Well, back to uh, 2008 on this day, we had Cyclone Jokwe, which was peaking on this day as a strong Category 3 off the coast of Mozambique. It was uh, 120 miles per hour and a pressure estimate of 940 millibars when it reached its peak early on March the 8th. 2008. We also had Tropical Storm Camber which had formed and was strengthening over the open Indian Ocean. Jokwe would then move towards the south uh, through the Mozambique Channel but it was making its closest approach today. Well then, Code Blue, the first name on the Atlantic naming list this year is Alberto. In the Eastern Pacific it's a letter, and in the Central Pacific we're still waiting for Hone. Nine storms so far this year, we average 92 every year. In the Western Pacific the next name is Winyar, and in the North Indian Ocean it is Rimal. Obviously not seen any activity really in the Northern Hemisphere yet, uh, so it's going to be, looks like it's been a bit of a slow start. In the Australian region, the next name is Megan, that could be on the way, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Filippo, still wondering, and in the South Pacific, it's Pitta. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin, we'll see you again tomorrow.